Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing the chapter 10 extensions. So these are kind of the little mini lessons in between our sections here. So it will be 10.2, which is on uh, page 641, and then 10.5's extension on page 669. Alright, so starting out with the 10.2 extension graph quadratic functions in intercept form. So intercept form is this y equals a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. So instead of my standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, our quadratic function, all right, our function with an x to the second power, can also be factored. All right, where it looks uh, like that, all right, and it's in a factored form. So, of course, we have the little restriction here. A can't equal zero. If A is zero, then that x squared term disappears, and my entire function then becomes linear. All right, so I need that x squared in order to uh, get a parabola, in order to get a quadratic function. All right, so in this form, when it's written like this, the x-intercepts of the graph can easily be determined. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the key concept box here. So when my quadratic function is written in a factored form, all right, here are some of the characteristics. The x-intercepts are those p and q values. All right, so I want you to be very careful. If you see an x plus 3, that means your x-intercept is actually negative 3 because in this formula it should be x minus negative 3. That's what reduce it, or, uh, produces that positive, all right? You're actually subtracting a negative. And if you see, you know, an x minus 4, my x-intercept here is actually a positive 4, all right? So think about it inside opposite. Um, technically, you know, the a lot of people think that the blood is blue on the inside and then once it hits the air, it's red. That's not really true, but just think inside opposite. All right, so I have these two x-intercepts. Here they are on my graph, uh, p comma zero and q comma zero. They're on my x-axis. So what happens right in the middle of them is my axis of symmetry. So how I actually get that value is this x equals p plus q divided by 2. I take the average of uh, those two values and that produces that line. All right, where if I then take that x value and I plug it in, I'm going to get my vertex, which is right there. All right, in addition, uh, this remains true for every quadratic function. If a is greater than 0, it opens up and it opens down if a is less than 0. So let's go ahead and look at a full example y equals the opposite of the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 5. All right, so um, one of the biggest ideas here it would to go ahead and, you know, label all of these variables, what they are, identify them. So a equals, here is a, it is negative, all right, it is negative 1. There's that hidden 1 in there and then p is a negative 1 and q is a positive 5. That's where we need to start out, all right? And they do that in the first step right here. So then they write those two points out, those two x-intercepts out, and they graph them. Boom, boom, there's my x-intercepts. So then we take this formula, we fill in our x-intercepts one at a time, we add them together and average them out, and we get 4 over 2, which is 2. So at x equals 2, here is my axis of symmetry. All right, and so then what point do I know is on the axis of symmetry? My vertex. The axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex, and the vertex is always on the axis of symmetry. So we can input into our original equation here, we can input a 2 for x, and then uh, get out the corresponding y value and get the vertex at 2, 9. So then we are given three points there, and we can draw our parabola. Now, I do have a couple of points, extra points here on the graph that I want to point out. 
it is going to be ideal in Algebra 2 for you guys to go ahead and do five points. I'm going to require on your graphs in Algebra 2 to have five points um, close to the vertex. So here are a couple of other, you know, um, options of points that I would find. You can see that they cross through really, really nicely if I erase them. Um, at even numbers. So I would be looking at, let me zoom back in here, all right, I would be looking at those x values close to the vertex, all right, so 1 and 0 are going to be really, really easy to plug in and for me to find points like that. All right, in our next example, we want to factor it and we want to get it into a point where it is written in intercept form. So right away you can see that there's an x squared term and a constant. There is no b. b is equal to zero so there is no x term. So in order to factor we want to look for the greatest common factor of 2 and 8 at the moment is just 2 so that brings us down to here and then I get something special. Alright x squared minus 4. Hopefully that rings a bell that is the difference of two squares. It is a pattern. So that factors into completely two times x plus two times x minus two. All right, so that means from my first set of parentheses, my x-intercept is negative two. And from my right set of parentheses, my x-intercept is a positive two. So here are my p and q values, and here are my two um, x-intercepts here on my graph. All right, so then my next uh, action is to take those values, plug them in, average them out, and you get a zero. So it perfectly reflects across the y-axis. That's your axis of symmetry. And then you want to input that zero for x in order to get the vertex. And it comes out to negative eight for y. So those are your three points, and you can draw a parabola and through those, making sure that it is a smooth curve, and uh, that is enough for Algebra 1. If this were Algebra 2, you would need a couple of additional points. All right, so here are the practice problems. I've already assigned a couple online. So we are going to move forward to 10.5's extension. So um, before, we've got standard form, so I'm going to write this out for us. We have standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we just covered intercept form, which is y equals a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. Well, guess what? There's a third form that these crazy quadratics can be written in, and that is vertex form. All right, y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So here is vertex form. Let's go ahead and look at its characteristics. As you might, um, might be able to piece together, if intercept form produced intercepts, vertex form is going to explicitly give you your vertex. So what this does is it shifts our entire parabola from the origin, h units horizontally, and k units vertically. So it moves that vertex. All right, my vertex is going to be h comma k. Please remember that we talked about inside opposite. So if you see x minus 2, it is actually a positive 2 for h, not a negative 2. The axis of symmetry is that x value of your vertex, which is h. And then, of course, this piece hasn't changed. If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. So looking at an example, it is always going to be helpful to identify your A, your H, and your K right off the bat. So A is negative 1. It is this value out here in front. Since A is negative, I know that right away I can draw a super simple sketch. Boom, it opens down. All right, and then if I take my h and k, I can get my vertex. So you, of course, always want to plot your axis of symmetry in your vertex first. So here's my axis of symmetry. That's negative 2, all right, since the, it's the x value of my vertex. And there's my vertex at negative 2, 3. 
And so that's my very first point that I want to plot. So then, from there, what you want to do is pick some x values uh, close to your vertex x value. So they went ahead and they picked negative 3, and then they chose to plug in negative 5 as well. Why? It doesn't matter. They could have picked negative 4. They could have picked negative 1. They could have picked 0. Alright, so as long as you get two points on one side of the graph, you can then reflect them across your axis of symmetry by an equal amount and uh, get a point on the other side. So, with that being said, they substitute negative 3 and negative 5 separately in for x, do all of the math behind that, and they then get these y values, which produce these points. So negative 3, 2, and negative 5, 6. All right, so that's these two points. That's what they actually found. So then what they do is they're like, well, here's the axis of symmetry. I'm one unit to the left of the axis of symmetry. So if at the same height, I move one unit to the right, I'm going to land there. So they plot a point there. Here they go one, two, three. I'm three units to the left. So I need to move three units to the right at the same height. All right. And they land at that point, And then they connect those five points on the parabola. All right. And here... In example two, we are needing to write it in vertex form. So if you can identify what form this is in, this is going from standard form to vertex form. We do this by completing the square. You've already completed the square in uh, previous sections that you were tested over. So here we're going to do it. They have it outlined like this. I'm actually going to do it a little bit differently on the right side here so that you can see it. All right, so we start out with our function. All right, it is in standard form. It's all nice and written out. Um, what is great is in Algebra 2, you're going to be moving really fluidly from form to form so that you can get um, from standard form, you can get whatever information you want. If you factor it, you can then get the x-intercepts. And if you then put it in vertex form, you can get your axis of symmetry in your vertex really, really easily. All right, so if you can move from form to form, you can get whatever information you want. Okay, so from here, um, to complete the square, we typically subtracted that constant to the other side. So we're going to do that. y minus 11 equals x squared minus 8x. And then on the side here, I do the b over 2 squared, which is negative 8 over 2 squared. So that's negative 4 squared, which is 16. So what I need to do is add 16 to both sides. And I get y equals positive 5, or sorry, y plus 5 equals x squared minus 8x plus 16. I need to factor the right side. That factors into x minus 4 times x minus 4. Or x minus 4 squared equals y plus 5. And then lastly, you move that 5 back over. So this is x minus 4 squared minus 5. All right, And that's exactly what they get here. Our process was just a little bit different. All right, they just put the 11 over to the right and kind of forget about it. I like to move it to the other side and then move it back. All right, so they then get, you know, your vertex is at 4 comma negative 5 from that piece of information. You know it opens up, and then they just choose some uh, random x values. So if it were me, I would then um, use my, you know, x values closest to to my vertex, so I would probably end up plugging in and creating a little, you know, t-chart here. I would use three, I would use two, I could possibly use one or zero. I'd want to make it easy on myself, all right? And if you were looking for something a little bit more specific, like, I don't know, I want my x-intercepts, you can reference this standard form all the way back, your original equation, and you can use the quadratic formula, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared 
minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so if I have this, I can find my exact uh, x-intercepts by correctly identifying my a, b, and c values. Just like in the last example, that's exactly what I did. I used the quadratic formula, and how I go from this vertex form actually back to standard form is you need to expand it. So x plus 2 times x plus 2 here. And then you need to do the foiling process. So this becomes the opposite of, I'm skipping a step here, plus 4x plus 4 plus 3. Then you need to take the opposite of that entire set. Negative x squared minus 4x minus 4 plus 3, leaving you with negative x squared minus 4x minus 1, all right? Um, where a is negative 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 1. You can use your quadratic formula there as well to find those x-intercepts. So we're moving from one form to the other, and yes, it's a little bit crazy, but it's also uh, kind of cool. All right, so here's your uh, last set of problems. I've identified the problems you need to complete online. If you have any questions, always feel free to email me or attend office hours. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Good luck.